Greg Doucette, Jeff Nippard, you guys have awesome channels. You provide a ton of awesome, valuable material. And I've been watching it. I followed you guys for years. But the thing is, believe it or not, a lot of your training recommendations are in fact incorrect. In today's video, I'm gonna prove it with research. What's up guys, Jay Vincent here. And in today's video, I'm gonna prove why the vast majority of training recommendations are in fact wrong. And these aren't just training recommendations that I give on my channel that just come out of thin air. These are based on a huge amount of hypertrophy studies that are peer reviewed and conducted over the course of the last 50 years. Now there's an excellent paper written by James Steele, James Fisher, and Dave Smith that is peer reviewed that is called evidence-based recommendations for muscle hypertrophy. So what these individuals did was they kind of noticed that most of the recommendations for muscle hypertrophy were kind of based off of opinion and tradition. They noticed that nobody really took the time to actually sift through all of the literature and come up with a general guideline and general basic recommendations for normal individuals who want to optimize muscle growth. So what they did in this study is they looked at everything, everything that was peer reviewed, everything that was well controlled. And most importantly, they looked at studies that eliminated elite populations like bodybuilders or professional athletes because elite populations can really skew the recommendations because they'll respond to just about everything. The recommendations I'm going to provide in this video are the recommendations I generally provide on my channel, and I'm gonna show you where they actually come from. I did not make these up. I did not just pull these out of thin air. These were based on what I found after diving deep into the literature about 10 years ago. Now I've been applying these recommendations since. These recommendations are going to be optimal for both trained and untrained natural individuals with average genetics. Now it's very easy for us to follow the biggest bodybuilder or the best professional athlete under the assumption that they got to where they are because of some genius or secret style of training. But the truth is, a lot of the times they got to where they are because of their genetic predispositions. And this is what leads people in the complete wrong direction when trying to find training recommendations. Because most people are under the impression that they can sculpt and tone and kind of mold their body into whatever you want. But that is just not true. So the recommendations I provide on my channel and the ones I'm going to talk about today are based on average individuals, trained and untrained, natural, excluding elite populations. And this is what is going to work the best for the majority of the population. So James Fisher and James Steele, after diving into 131 peer-reviewed exercise research papers, came up with a set of general recommendations for optimizing muscle growth. Now, what are they? Number one, intensity of effort. Persons should aim to recruit as many motor units and thus muscle fibers as possible by training until momentary muscular failure. Now you may have heard me say that training to muscle failure is the most effective and this is true. This is based off of old literature conducted by Pennybacher in 1938 and Dr. Elwood Henneman in the 50s. They found that the more effort put forth into an exercise is responsible for how much muscle fiber is recruited and therefore stimulated to grow. It doesn't have to do with the exercise or the angle of the exercise. It has to do with how hard you push your body in that exercise. And we have known this for a long time. So if you want to optimize muscle growth, high intensity of effort is the key recommendation. And in this paper, which I'll link in the description below, they give the studies that they looked over where they came up with this recommendation. Now, there are some studies that show training to muscle failure is not as effective or can result in 
neuromuscular fatigue or nervous system burnout. This is correct, but those studies are always done with multiple sets. So keep in mind, none of those studies have compared one set training versus multiple set training when taken to failure. So of course, if you're training to muscle failure with multiple sets and multiple exercises, of course you will burn out, but that is the under the assumption that multiple sets are required, but they're not. Another recommendation in this paper, after looking at several peer-reviewed exercise studies, single set training appears to provide similar hypertrophic gains to multiple set training. So this is where everybody's getting confused. A lot of people don't wanna to train to failure because you're going to burn out or fry your nervous system. Yes, if you're doing multiple sets to failure, you will be doing way more than is necessary to stimulate your muscle growth. Basically, any sets after one set performed with a high intensity of effort to failure simply accumulates more inflammation and more stress with no additional signal or no additional stimulus in muscle hypertrophy. So this paper recommends single set training if done to failure because it appears that additional sets if you're training to failure only create more stress with no additional stimulus of things like the mTOR pathway for stimulating hypertrophic gain. Third recommendation outlined in this paper, load and repetition range. Persons should self-select a weight and perform repetitions to failure, as we discussed earlier. Evidence suggests that this is optimal for maximizing hypertrophy. So it doesn't matter which weight, which load, which rep range you're using, as long as you are training to momentary muscle failure. Individuals can self-select a load and self-select a repetition range. Whether you like to go heavy or go a little bit lighter, the outcome is going to be the same as long as you are performing sets a momentary muscle failure. So lift heavy to get big is wrong. Lift light to get tone is wrong. And it's right here in the literature. Now back to volume and frequency. The frequency recommendation or how many times a week you should train. Well, the research shows frequency of training should be self-selected as there appears no evidence which can support any recommendation. So what they found was if you're training with, of course, high intensity of effort, preferably to failure, very close to failure. One training session a week versus two, versus three, versus four, all seem to provide similar hypertrophic gain. So with this erroneous assumption that you need to train five, six, seven days a week to optimize muscle growth is wrong. Many people could get great results just training one or two times a week if the stimulus is adequate. And the stimulus is adequate when pushing the body with a high level of intensity of effort to or very close to muscular failure. And when you are training this way with adequate set duration, you really don't need to train all that frequently to get good results. Now keep in mind, we're not talking about professional bodybuilders here. Obviously, professional bodybuilders, which are enhanced, can tolerate way more volume and way more frequency and almost certainly benefit from it. But if you are the normal individual not competing in professional bodybuilding, well, just a couple of workouts a week is going to be optimal for you. Now, here's a good one. Repetition duration. Persons should perform contractions at a repetition duration that maintains muscular tension. Performing repetitions too briefly appears to unload the muscle and hinder hypertrophic gain. Now, this is where my slow repetition recommendation comes from. You want to maintain muscular tension or continuous muscular loading, which is going to keep motor units engaged and result in a more efficient and aggressive muscular fatigue. This is going to result in a better stimulus. Now, this doesn't mean that if you lift fast, you're not going to get gains. Of course you are. But lifting and lowering the weight more slowly, about four, five, six seconds each direction, is going to make it way safer by eliminating peak force production and by keeping the muscle under load and keeping motor units constantly engaged. This is going to be a much more efficient and safe, thereby a more effective way to load and fatigue your muscle. 
Now, range of motion. Guess what? Persons can self-select the range of motion they exercise through. There appears no evidence to suggest that decreased range of motion negatively affects muscular hypertrophy. So when people say you need to train through a full range of motion, this is wrong based on the evidence and based on just basic understanding of actinomycin overlap and cross bridging, it is evident and obvious. You do not need to train through a huge range of motion and actually loading the muscle in passive tension or the fully extended position or a very extended position of the range of motion can be very dangerous for the joint and it is not going to result in any better hypertrophy than sticking to a relatively short range of motion. So. Another recommendation, resistance type. Persons should select resistance type based on personal choice. Evidence appears to suggest that hypertrophy is attainable using free weights, machines, and any other resistance type. So when people say you need to use free weights to get strong or free weights to get big, wrong. Your body doesn't know the difference between a free weight, machine, or body weight. The goal of these tools is simply to provide resistance for the muscle to work against, to place a high demand on the muscle's function, which is to produce force and to create a lot of tension and metabolic stress. Whether you're using a free weight, whether you're using body weight or a hammer strength machine makes no difference as long as you are generating enough stress and turning on the signal to stimulate improvements in muscle growth and muscle strength. Now, one last recommendation I want to go over is training and detraining time. People are generally under the belief that if you miss one or two days in the gym, you're going to turn into a fat, weak slob. This is false. Brief, around three week absences from training appear not to cause significant atrophy and potentially promote greater hypertrophy upon returning to training. So guess what? Based on the literature, you could literally take a couple of weeks off completely and not suffer from severe muscle atrophy and not lose your gains. People are under the impression that if you take a couple of days off, you're going to lose everything. This is wrong. And I've experienced this in training hundreds of clients that a lot of times they would go on a vacation and come back a week or two later and be stronger and grow muscle even quicker because that detraining time allows your body generally to optimize its recovery. And then when you come back and apply the stimulus, your body is ready to make that adaptation. So those are the basic evidence-based recommendations based on this paper by James Fisher and James Steele in 2013. This paper was peer reviewed and published in medical journals. And this paper is where I get the majority of my exercise recommendations from. So if you are a average individual, not a professional bodybuilder, not a professional athlete who can tolerate more, may not necessarily need more, but can tolerate more. If you're an average drug-free individual, trained or untrained, these are the recommendations you want to follow. Of course, you might be able to go to the gym more and possibly tolerate more, but that doesn't mean you're going to see any additional benefit. And 131 peer reviewed and published research papers prove that those recommendations that I just explained and the recommendations that I give on my channel and in my golden era system are the best way for the vast majority of individuals to optimize muscle growth and muscle strength. And if you want a system that shows you exactly what to do following these principles, go to goldenerasystem.com. There are exercise demonstrations that show you exactly how to perform these exercises according to these evidence-based principles and videos explaining these principles in detail and even videos explaining how to diet for optimal results. Go to goldenerasystem.com and you can just get right to this type of training and see insane results with just a couple of very brief workouts per week. Now, if you would like my personal help coaching you through these principles, adjusting your diet, adjusting your training, and teaching you more in-depth detail about this approach and just general evidence-based 
approaches to exercise, click the link in the description and book a free 30 minute call with me to learn about my VIP unlimited lifetime coaching program where I will work with you directly, give you unlimited access to me, teach you everything you need to know about evidence based exercise. And of course, please hit the like and subscribe and the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I drop more videos explaining the truth in the appropriate approach to exercise.